That's me in that light-colored sedan on my way to work. My name is Jim Morrow. I had a real struggle for a while. Let me tell you my story. It's a true story. It's about the importance of knowing how to listen and how I learned to do it. Like most people, I thought I was a pretty good listener most of the time. Well, I learned the hard way that I was actually a pretty poor listener. And as a result, I caused some costly problems for my company and myself. In fact, it almost cost me my job. But let me tell you my story. Being in the equipment business, I'm used to technical problems. When my problems started, I was convinced that technical problems were what I had. Our worst problem was the generator we'd installed at a local hospital. It wouldn't stay online. Not again. When are they going to get that power problem fixed? My project manager had been to the hospital three times to check it Look, out. Like I told you, it's not this generator that's screwed up. It's the way the electrical contractors could wired it. You gave him our diagrams of the changes he was supposed to make. Didn't he do it? Hey, I can't swear he followed our diagrams. I told you I couldn't work with that kid. You did say something about him being a know-it-all. That is not all. At that point, I didn't believe listening had anything to do with our problem. But when I got back to the office, that subject of listening came up. Mary called me in. She's one boss who tells it like it is. I understand we've got a problem over at the hospital. What's going on? It's basically a technical problem. I'll get it handled, don't worry. I know you're good technically, but I wonder if this isn't a people problem. And we've got another problem, too. Fred Binder from Starco called, left a message on my voicemail. I think you better hear this. Jim Morrow's holding up a $4 million project out here. I told him we need the fire inspector's permits, and we need them now. The fire inspector's the holdup, not me. Now, here's what I'm up against. I'm dealing with a brand new fire inspector who thinks he's got something to prove and his boss is backing him up. They're both typical bureaucrats. These codes aren't just forms to fill out, you know. They're safety codes. But your other inspectors have been passing our tanks for years. Well, maybe you've been in violation for years. Look, if you can show us your tanks meet the intent of these codes, then maybe... I've got experts in Washington working on this and they say that we're just fine. Well, that's Washington. These are state codes. And by the way I read them, your tanks don't pass. We need those permits, Jim. Do you understand? Fred Binder is not a patient man. And listen to this. So what do I have to do to get you people to listen? Sue your company? Hey, the fire inspector's the one who won't listen. You know, this may sound like people 101, but I wonder if it wouldn't help you more if you made it your goal to understand the other person, not just be understood. Does that make any sense? Well, sure, but... Now listen. In your position, I have got to have someone who can communicate with people, as well as solving technical problems. Do you understand what I'm saying, Jim? Yeah. I understood what she was saying. My job was on the line. But the goal to understand, not just be understood, went right by me. Well, that night I went home pretty stressed. And by a crazy coincidence, my wife was about to provide some answers to my problems. Tough day, huh? Yeah. I'm sure you know about the power problem at the hospital. And that's just one crisis. Well, that power problem is serious. I know, I know. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. I brought home some work, too. That's nice. Aren't you interested in what kind of work I might bring home from a hospital? Well... Jim, are you listening to me? You know, that's all I've heard all day. I'm not insensitive, am I? Don't I listen most of the time? Well, most of the time. My homework, it's a tape. You'll never guess what it's about. Listening. <laughs> Why don't you watch it with me? The last thing I need is a self-help video. I've got work to do. Just watch for five minutes. OK. Stop, think, and listen. In this video on listening, we will give you techniques we think are keys to good listening. Studies show most people listen at 25% efficiency. Now we're going to show you how to use three basic steps to listen at nearly 100% efficiency. These uh, self-help courses have a quick fix answer for everything, don't they? Well, just give it a chance. Let me assure you, this is not a quick fix system. You have to take responsibility to make it work. Okay, first, when someone is talking, how often do you stop and pay attention? Probably you're like most of us. You're busy, someone starts talking to you, but your mind is on something else. And before you know it, you've missed the message. That's a very common listening problem. The solution is to activate your original awareness. That is, hear it for the first time. If you don't catch it when it's first said, 
how you remember it. Okay, here's a tip that can help you hear it the first time. The moment someone starts talking to you, stop whatever you're doing and change your physical position. Put your body in a position that faces the speaker. Focus your eyes on the speaker. You're there to listen. When you make a conscious effort to move into a listening position, your mind will follow your body's direction. You'll be alert and listen better. It also helps to make encouraging gestures, like nodding your head, seeking eye contact, and even making encouraging responses. I like that. Tell me more. When an important subject comes up in a meeting, sometimes just changing your body position, like sitting up straight, helps you wake up, concentrate, and listen. You, watching this video, sit up a little straighter, will you? Now we've got your attention, but how do we keep it? Our minds tend to wander because we listen three to ten times faster than we talk. It's that lag time that gets us in trouble. But if you stop and think, you can utilize that lag time to your advantage. It gives you time to ask yourself some mental questions about what you're hearing. This can help you stay alert and focused. Here are some examples. What are the key points? Do I need to write this down? How will I use this information? What does he mean? I better ask. Asking about facts is especially important when the message might be obscured by the speaker's feelings upset, and emotion. He's emotional. He's cussing. I don't like it when people cuss. I can't handle it. What are the facts I need? Did you know one of the greatest barriers to communication is our tendency to evaluate what the other person is saying before hearing them out? If we can set our own feelings aside, we might get a very different message. Everything's a big deal to Julie, but is there really a problem? I need more information. Excuse me, Julie, what was the order for? I mean, what exactly did you tell the customer? Well, it was for three AA units. Asking questions is one of the best ways to get at the real message as you listen. Have you ever been listening and suddenly felt you missed something, and then while you tried to figure out what you missed, you missed more? You didn't want to interrupt or admit you weren't paying attention or didn't understand, so you ended up not getting the message, right? I admit, it takes some courage, but it pays in the long run to ask a question the moment you realize you've missed something. That idea really helped me. Sometimes at work, I didn't have the courage to say when I didn't understand. You? No guts? I don't believe it. <laughs> That's because you don't know Dr. Stevens. Like the other day, Please. he was giving no. me instructions, but he talks so fast, oh. and he's always on the move. 15 cc's, Droxamine. Liquids only until late this afternoon, then he goes back on the restricted diet. He's ambulatory, but if he shows any signs of discomfort, don't push it. I'll check him tomorrow. I knew if I asked him to repeat it, he was going to make me feel stupid. But I had to do it. Oh, Dr. Stevens? What is it now? I'm sorry, I really don't want to bother you again, but I want to check on something. You say he's on a restricted diet, but which restricted diet? The same one he's been on all week. Okay, I'll look that up. Um, also, you say he's ambulatory. Does that mean he can go for walks in the hall? Let's don't be marching him up and down the hall like a soldier. No, just a few steps in the room if he feels like it. Is that all? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. I'm glad I asked. Now that's a good nurse. She doesn't like to take chances. Asking for feedback can be tough, but it's worth it to make sure you understand. Well, sure, but that's in your business. You're in the people business. Oh, and you poor thing have only machines to talk to. No people. <laughs> Come on, Jim. Stop, think, and listen. Actually, I was trying to be a better listener. Mary, my boss, had gotten my attention. But listening is a skill, and I still had a few things to learn. Anyway, that afternoon when I met Ed and the electrician, I tried to stop, think, and listen. You did run those lines like I told you in the beginning, didn't you? I